Okay. Hey, hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my demo. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot uh, stay face to face this time at the trophy, but uh, but uh, we, we can you can you can come in my studio and I can I can be in front of you while you are at, at your sofa or at, at home so this demo is going to be well not a real demo because I'm not in front of you uh, and uh, I just will record the most interesting part of the of the work to make it more easy to, to follow, some close-ups, information. So there is not going to be uh, time for just waiting, which is uh, boring. So I invite you to stay with me and, uh, and see how uh, we transform this uh, Silvestris. Okay, now that you accept my invitation to stay here with me, uh, watching the demo, I will explain what I'm going to do, what is my general idea for that tree. Uh, as you may see, it's a silvestris, Pinus silvestris, and uh, already you realize that it's, it's too tall, and uh, all, the, all the foliage is in one side, so it looks like a big Bungin with a very strong uh, base and uh, probably if I asked you what uh, what is your idea what you would like to do probably some people will say cut here cut here and uh, then work with uh, two branches and create a little foliage or maybe a fukinagashi something like that and Maybe some others decide to cut here and create a big bungin. I don't know, but uh, well, this is this is not my my idea. So the the base is quite powerful. Have many genes, which could be interesting after after working. And I will I would like to make it more compact. I don't know how how tall is is it. Maybe I can get a measure. Dame un metro, Sergio. <laughs> this is Sergio. <laughs> ¿Cuánto? Metro 24. Uh, 124 is is uh, too much for a for a bonsai. So I would like to reduce and to make it more more compact. We'll see what happens. I I will work first of all on the on the knobs to create a nice deadwood. Uh, I'm not going to need a Dremel or Makita or anything, just uh, gym pliers and uh, did this uh, chisel, um, and we'll see what what happened. So I, I decide exactly what to do after working on on the deadwood, and I will show you right now. So as I, I said, uh, I'm not going to to use uh, power tools. I will do everything with the uh, chisel, but also 
uh, with other tools, hand tools, to to split the the dead wood and create a natural effect. Here you can see that I already opened a little bit, so it's just by using the uh, root root cut cutter like this, and then I split a little bit and then continue with the gym pliers. So by doing this, I can I can take out the texture of the dead wood, the uh, the little jeans that are hidden inside, and I can create a uh, uh, different shape, different dips, and and create something interesting. So very important tool the the um, root uh, cutter like this. Also a smaller knob cutter and this one, the gym pliers. And also I have a, an old uh, uh, branch cutter like this that I use quite often to yeah to to help me to to split the the fibers and remove dead wood. So you you can see here that uh, when I want to remove the inner part of the dead wood, like is this uh, piece, first of all I, I need to open a space here to make it possible the inner fibers to or fibers I don't know to to go outside. So because they are very they are very inside. No sé si lo puedo girar. Ahí se ve. It's coming from very inside. So uh, if, I, if I keep the dead wood here in this area, then the fi fibers get broken. So I, I need to, to open and give you space. And I can use another chisel. To make room. Ah. From this side is not so easy. Okay, and now I'll try again with the gym pliers. You see? So that that is because there is not a space for them to get out. So I remove this. By using the edging plier, I keep continue removing dead wood and making it uh, lighter because it's, it it is a very heavy knob. So we need to reduce and give more movement by eliminating dead wood. Ah, another tool that I use a lot is that one. Uh, it's to finish here after splitting to delimitate where I want to. I want the the fiber stop uh, going. Okay. Please don't do this with the, with the same branch cutter that you are using for cut your branches. This is only used for dead wood. There is something that I don't like that is this this uh, curve here, this, this shape. So I want to make it more like straight. So I want to use the root uh, cutter and and 
remove a big piece of dead wood. More. So like this, I, I can give more movement. And now I will use the knob cutter here because I, I don't like this uh, portion here. I will carp. So hand, to, hand tools are my favorite for deadwood. Sometimes it's necessary to use power tools, but I try I don't to use them. As you may see, the the gin uh, looks uh, much uh, different, and and now what I want to do is uh, to remove all these uh, uh, fibers by using a strong steel brush like this. Goodbye, gin. Okay, after this process, the, you can see better the texture and uh, I, I will continue repeating again and again, uh, first two times with the steel, steel brass and then with the bronze brass, more and softer, and until I finish the process. And uh, after that, it will look almost like uh, uh, sand uh, blasted uh, dead wood. Okay, now the, the work on the dead wood is uh, finished um, and, and next step is uh, define the, the trunk line. And uh, I want to work on, on this area because I would, like to, I would like to bend it. Because yeah, it will be easier to just bend here, open here and, and bring the follies, but I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure that the result w uh, could be interesting. So I will open here with, uh, with the Makita and uh, I will remove wood from the inside of the trunk and that will make possible to, to bend. First on this direction, down and uh, frontwards and then twist. Okay, I... I I marked uh, four four points. 
the two in the middle mark the the um, hole that I will open in the bark, and this is where I'm going to from this hole. I will try to go inside arriving to that point, but without opening the the bark. Okay, so rock and roll. Okay, as you may see, the the I I uh, make a hole here, and but it's deeper than you may see, so it's go upwards as and downwards as well, and uh, to the side, to one side and the other. So that keep a keep all the all the cambium around. Just I remove the cambium here, but. Uh, allowed me to to twist and, and and bend so this is more than enough Okay, now the the bending area is uh, protected with uh, tape. It's uh, cotton cotton. It's, it is a cotton tape, and uh, inside the hole there is nothing. And uh, I just mark with uh, with a magic with a pencil uh, the where is the hole just to see how it it moves. Okay, and now. I I am going to proceed to bend the trunk and maybe I will I will need some some help like this uh, rebar. Okay. Okay, what I'm doing now is uh, fix here a, a wire to tie the the trunk after bending. So this one is going to be waiting here, and probably it, it will go to this uh, second gene. But it could happen that I need a, a, another rebar here to to have a, another point for for pulling. Okay, so now I think me voy a ayudar con la barra. I'm going to use the rebar. Then I need your help. Uh, I want to bend here. Okay, now that I I compact the tree a little bit, 
uh, then I can remove the rebar. Okay, so now my idea is to pull from, from this point a little bit down and backwards, like this. So, I don't know, maybe I will need a, maybe I can use this uh, yin or, or maybe I, I should use a, a rebar from here to here to get a, a point for the anchor more up. Okay. Now uh, we apply a tourniquet here and, and we are pulling and bending down, but here in the insertion of, of this sort of branch is, is uh, breaking, not breaking, but splitting. So now, because I, I before I introduced a, uh, what is it, tornillo? Tornillo something like this <laughs> then I, I will I, I will use a second tourniquet to pull from this section not not here alambre I'm going to to split the trunk here into pieces. One side the uh, gene, the other side the uh, the alive uh, trunk. So la sierra. Branch cutter. This branch is is weak. I would like to to use it as an apex, but I don't think it's going to to get strong enough. So now we have a gene. You may see that have some uh, shoots, but mm, I don't think it's going to be healthy enough. So goodbye. And the apex will come from here. And then this branch to this side. Here you may see how I split the, the trunk. And the second split was here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. 
but the bark here is perfect and also here. So this is no, there's no risk. This is kind of bending. Okay. So this could be a new, this could be a, the, the new front, the new angle. So the idea is uh, bend it, this branch here, here, and use this one for the for the apex. So probably create a kind of copy here with the movement in the branches. So we'll see. Now I'm going to to use a keto for the uh, for the splits here to protect the the alive vein and don't lose more sap and uh, some cleaning and we will start uh, wiring. Okay, so you can see that the, all the main branches are placed, so mm, the structure is more or less uh, created. Uh, the branches have been bent by tourniquets, like this, uh, and uh, my idea is to well, to to show the the texture of the bark, which is very interesting, also the movement of the old branches, and uh, well, create a balanced tree. I don't want something kukinagashi or very dramatic. So we will move branches. The apex will be will go down. The apex will be here, here. This one here. But uh, working on the on the quality of the of the lines, this is something very impo important for me. So after that, the next step is uh, wiring. Vale. Okay, after some wearing, uh, we got uh, on the right place the three first uh, branches in branch, back branch, and, and right uh, branch. So, uh, because all the foliage is coming from one point, from this branch, uh, well, uh, the, the movement is quite uh, well, different because it's coming from backwards, upward, and going frontwards. So, well, some, there, there are some tricks that you, we need to use when, when we are working with a material like, like this. So, now, 
So the, the most difficult thing is for me is this area, the apex, because it's coming from here in the back and the branch is not long enough. Then I need to press a little bit to, to bring, bring here enough foliage. So well, now I will continue with the, with the wiring and, and then I will, I, I will sort it. Studying the, the trunk line, uh, I realized that I cannot make it too compact, too down, because otherwise the, the tree will have a poor tapering, even with that uh, huge and wide uh, base. But if I, I compact to here the, the foliage, it's like the tree stopped suddenly, and I need to, to get more tapering and make it more fluid. So I will bring the up the apex higher. And how how can I do it if I, I don't have uh, foliage now? In the same with the same system that I create the, the rest of the tree, creating very big uh, spaces between branches and, uh, and and giving balance to to all of them. Now the tree is finished and uh, we have a complete tree with uh, apex branches everywhere and I feel so satisfied because it was not a post, it was 140 something, no 24, 124 centimeters and now I don't know. <laughs> And now it's 90, 94, I think. So it was a good reduction. And uh, on the most important thing is now the tree is uh, beautiful, impressive base, and the uh, bark and, and a nice rhythm in the in the path and uh, well, good quality. Branches. So the trees have, have branches in all directions, of course. So it's not just uh, everything going to one side. So for me, it's important that the tree is beautiful from all around, not only in front. Here, the back you see is more complex because all the branches. There. So that's all. Now maybe a little 
cleaning, refine, little refinement, and uh, we'll be we'll be ready for the last image. Okay. Thank you.